Yo, we have one improper integral and one infinite series on the spot. If you have to prepare for your Cal 2 final, be sure you pause the video and try this first. Leave a comment down below and let me know if you guys like the improper integral more or the infinite series more, right? Comment down below and let me know. Okay, so I will tell you guys that the answer to this one right here is natural log of 3. And then the answer to this one right here is just 3 half. Yes, they both converge, but they converge to different values. And let's see how we can actually figure out the values, right? So for this one, we notice we have x squared minus 1 in the denominator. So we can factor it, and we can just do partial fraction from here. So let's see, I will factor this, and we get x minus 1 times x plus 1. And this is going to be the integral from 2 to infinity. And you have to have one fraction over x minus 1, and you add it with the other fraction with x plus 1. Of course, the dx right here. And then we can just do the cover up method like this. To figure this out, you go back to the original, and you cover the same denominator. And you have to ask yourself, okay, how can you make this factor 0? Well, when x minus 1 is 0, that, x, that means x has to be 1. And then you plug in 1 into the remaining x, right there. Right here. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 over 2 is 1. So, the first number right here is 1. And then, to figure out this number, you go back to the original, you are going to cover this up. And you have to ask yourself, how can you make this factor equal to 0? And the answer to that is, x has to be negative 1. This is covered already. You plug in negative 1 here. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. 2 over negative 2 is negative 1. So you have negative 1 here. And then you can just integrate this and that. And as we can see, this right here is going to give me natural log absolute value of x minus 1. And then we have this minus here. And then we have natural log of x plus 1. And be careful. You have to look at the derivative of x plus 1 which is just 1, so you don't have to divide anything, right? So this is nice. And then we have to go ahead and plug in numbers, and also the infinity, all that stuff. Well, well, the trouble here is that if you plug infinity here and here, you get ln of infinity minus 1, which is infinity, minus, of, minus ln of infinity. That doesn't quite make sense. You have to actually combine them first and maybe do some limits, right? So I will do that. This is the same as natural log of absolute value. This is on the top, x minus 1, and then over x plus 1. Because this is just the natural log property. When you subtract two natural logs, you can put them together as a quotient. And you are going to be plugging numbers. And as I said, if you plug infinity, you have to take limit. So let's just put this down on the side right here. Notice. If you take the limit as x goes to infinity of this expression, ln of x minus 1 over x plus 1 like this, well, well, what you can do is you can just have the natural log here and the absolute value. In fact, you don't need absolute value because everything says positive. Anyway, I'll keep it. And then you take the limit of x approaching infinity of x minus 1 over x plus 1, right? And you will see this is ln absolute value. When x is approaching infinity, well, you can just pay attention to the x here and then x here, right? Because the power here on the top is, the degree on the top is 1, and the degree on the top, on the bottom is 1 as well. Do whichever way you want. You can end up with 1. You can also do L'Hopital right here, right? And ln of 1 is nicely equal to 0. So, when you plug in infinity here, you have to show the node on the side because you have to take the limit. You get 0 here. Alright, and then we are going to be plugging 2 in here. So we have minus ln absolute value. Seriously, you can just use uh, parentheses, but it doesn't matter. Put down 2 here, and then minus 1 over 2 here, and then plus 1. And now, let's see what we have. This is, of course, just negative ln. Now, let's put on absolute value, because you see 2 minus 1 is just 1, over 2 plus 1 is 3, like this. 
that's pretty much it. However, if you look at the negative in the front, we can bring this up to the power like that. So we are looking at this as ln uh, to the well, ln of one third to the negative one power. And of course, this is a saying, three to the negative one power in the denominator, you can bring that up. So in the end, you get ln three like this. Okay, done, right? Right, so pretty cool, huh? Now, let's see how we can handle this right here. Let me just draw like little divider, because I need that. Well, well, we are going to be doing partial fractions as well. So let's see, this right here is the summation going from two to infinity. And it's pretty much just this. And instead of the x, you are going to be using n. And I will put that down. n minus one, and one on the top. And then, of course, I will just put down the minus here and the one over n plus one, like that. Once again, partial fraction, same thing over there. But this right here, you're not going to integrate. <laughs> All right, you have to do the following. This is an example of a telescoping series. But let me demonstrate what we mean by that. First, when you see this kind of things, meaning when you have two expressions, and they are just off by several terms. What I mean by that, they are the same kind. One on the top, and then on the bottom, here you have n minus one, here you have n plus one. They are just off by two. They are the same kind, right? But they are just off by two. So in this kind of situations, you are just going to try to follow it to see if this converges or not. And you can watch my other video for more examples on telescoping series. Okay, so starting value is n equals two. This means I will have to plug in two into here and here. So the first term I get is one over two minus one is one, and then minus one over plug in two here. Of course, that will give me three like this. And then next, I will have to plug in n equals three. So let's see. When n equals three, plug into here, and then plug in three into here, I get minus one over uh, four, like that. And you're just gonna write down a few more terms so because you can see a nice pattern after that. And you should also write down the nth term right here. So when n is equal to n, then you just write that down. So you have one over n minus one, minus one over, m plus one, like that. And this right here technically keeps on going forever. But I just put on the nth term right here. Okay, now, maybe you see it, maybe not, but I will show you anyway. First parentheses, we have one over one minus one third. And then we're adding with the second parentheses. And you see that the parentheses actually, they don't matter. You can just take them out, right? Because they actually this converges. And you see, this is negative one third. And you see that here we have plus one third. And of course, negative one third and positive one third, they cancel each other out. Notice though, for the future term right here, the first guy got canceled out first. Okay, this guy got canceled out first. That's important you'll see. Next, here I have positive one half, but there's no negative one half. This guy stays. That one was staying, was staying as well. But anyway, if you look at negative one over four, you see that you have a positive one over four right here. So you can cancel this two out as well. And you just move on. Let's say here you have negative one over five, but you know this term has positive one over five. Cancel this out. So in fact, this whole parenthesis is gone. And you have this. And right here, you have negative one over six, in fact, this will be canceled out with whatever this is right here, right? And similarly, if you have minus one over seven, this will cancel with some other terms right here, and so on, so on, so on. So it kind of collapse, right? And this is just what they mean by the uh, telescoping, like the dual days, the telescoping. Anyway, they all cancel. And for this parentheses though, you have to know the first guy will cancel out with somebody in the front. For this guy, the first term will cancel out with somebody in the front, right? With somebody in the front, like that. Why? Because remember, if you look at this term, this guy, one third, was canceled out with somebody in the front, right? So if you notice the nth term, this guy will be canceled out with somebody in the front, right? And you have to pay attention to the remaining term right here. So let me just circle that, and this will keep on going forever. 
So what does this mean? Let me show you. The surviving term. First of all, we have 1, and then the next one we have plus 1 half. So this is uh, what we have, these are what we have now, and so on. But you have to pay attention to the surviving term right here. The one that involves the n. You have to pay attention to that. This right here is minus 1 over n plus 1. And this right here keeps on going forever. So we have to take the limit as n goes to infinity of this expression. Well, well, these two are just 1 and 1 half. And then when n goes to infinity, this right here is 1 over infinity plus 1, which is pretty much 0. In another word, altogether, we get 1 plus 1 half minus 0. Work this out, right? So this right here is how you handle a telescoping series. And now I wanted to make some remarks. First, as you can see, this improper integral converges to ln3, but this infinite series converges to 3 half. Well, well, here is the deal. Sometimes you may want to test out to see if this infinite series converges or not. You can change this to the corresponding improper integral. You have to provide two conditions, though. First, you have to notice that this function is positive and decreasing on this interval. If so, then you can use the integral test. And what the integral test says is that if you test this out and you see this right here converges, then you can also draw a conclusion that this infinite series also converges. However, they may not converge to the same value, right? But I think this is really cool because, in fact, we were able to work out both of these um, things right here, right? I think this is a great question, uh, especially if you want to prepare for your Cal2 final. So be sure you kind of just understand everything I cover. And yeah, leave a comment down below and let me know if you guys have any questions. And if you're new, be sure to subscribe so you can get a lot more interesting math videos and also math lesson videos just like this right here. Anyway, as always, that's it.